Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Renter. This is part two on building your own Holly carburetor. Uh, there's also a third part that's coming out, so I hope to see you guys all throughout this entire series. Watch all three videos before you actually start writing in comments because I might actually answer them later on in either this video or the next video. And if you guys haven't seen the first video, go ahead and watch that first because it's kind of important for when we're talking about this. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So in the last episode, I ended with telling you guys that I was actually not going to be using the factory Demon base plate on my new turbo carburetor build and that I was actually going to be switching over to this billet unit. I believe this might be a Speedmaster, but I actually don't know the brand. Unlike this one that has the obvious symbols right here stamped into it, this doesn't have anything at all. It has 354 on the plates which tells me that all four are the same size at the very least i know that but any kind of other markings are non-existent on this base plate before i tell you guys why i want to use it i actually want to go over why it's going to be difficult if i actually want to use this in place of this one and the most obvious one is because this base plate does not match the existing base plate. As I mentioned in the last video, these base plates are designed to work with the main bodies that they were designed to go on. And if we take the same gasket from earlier and we go ahead and match it up here, you're gonna see that these holes line up perfectly right here. And if I go ahead and move it to this side and I try to line them up, you're gonna notice that one of the holes lines up perfect, but the other hole does not. And what those holes are actually for, those actually feed the idle circuit. So if you flip this around, you'll see that this thing actually feeds the idle circuit right here, and the other side feeds the transition. So if we go ahead and accelerate a little bit, you'll see that the transition's right there. We close it, and the only holes exposed are one right here. So on the factory base plates, you're gonna see that the holes for the idle are right here, right here, right here and right here, just like these ones are. But if you flip it around, you're gonna see how the circuit actually works. So on a two corner idle carburetor base plate, just like this one, you are feeding the primary circuit just like you did on the Demon. But instead of each corner being fed individually, you are actually feeding the back corners with the front. So fuel will go through here, it will also transfer to the back side, and then that's how it feeds the back side. So when you adjust for the front, idle mixture you're also adjusting the back when you have a four corner idle carburetor each individual hole has its own circuit so each one needs its own hole for it to work as you guys can see we don't have any passages that fuel goes around here when you convert a carburetor to four corner idle you actually have to block that passage off so you don't get fuel flow going through here that being said that because this idle circuit does not match this idle circuit what i'm actually going to have to do is i'm actually going to have to modify this base plate and drill out the idle circuit so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to paint holes here 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 and here and what that'll do is it'll give me a guide for me to work off of so after i hole punch this i can go ahead and take this off and then drill here and go ahead and chamfer this into this area right here so that way i have fuel feeding in through here and then going that way. One thing to note is that when you're looking at the Demon base plate, that's already been done. So if you look at the hole right here that we were talking about earlier, there's actually already a chamfer here, which tells you that this base plate can work on different main bodies and it's already set up to do so, provided that the gasket matches the throttle boards appropriately. Also, you guys will notice that here for the transition, this is also drilled out depending on where the holes are right here on the gasket. So not only can you run different main bodies, you could also run different types of gaskets and the holes will still more or less line up accordingly. So the second problem I actually have with this base plate is the fact that this base plate is thicker than this base plate. So if I actually go ahead and put this um, micrometer on it, it's about 12.7 millimeters and i'm using millimeters because it's easier to understand and translate so you know what i'm talking about so it's 12.7 millimeters so so if we take a reading off the demon base plate we're at about 11 millimeters 
So you guys are saying, what's the big deal? It's only thicker by 1.5 millimeters. And in fact, the thicker base plate's even better because you have less chance of it bending or warping and you can apply more torque and you'll have less problems. And you are 100% correct. All of these tolerances are CNC'd machined, so they're supposed to work perfectly with any standard Holley carburetor. The problem is that when you incorporate the fuel bowls of the Demon, you have these little lips on the bottom. So as you guys can see, this bowl actually has some markings here because this bowl, I actually try to run it on this base plate. And what happens is that 1.5 millimeters difference between one base plate and the other, this will actually contact the base plate and it won't let it seat correctly and it'll actually bind right here uh, going in and then I won't be able to tighten it all the way or if I do, I'm gonna have a couple bits of a problem. So I'm either going to modify the base plate in order to accommodate this or I'm gonna trim this off the fuel bowl in order to get it to work. So aside from those two issues, those are the only ones I actually see that will provide a hindrance. But you guys are asking, why don't I just use the Demon base plate? And the reason is, this is an older base plate. It's got play in it. It's got a bunch of features that I don't need. And I actually want something a little bit newer for the carburetor, something that's a little bit more simple with not as many bells and whistles. And if I need to modify something, I can modify this on this brand new base plate. And I don't have to mess with this one that's right here at all. I can just go ahead and do any kind of fabrication to this one if I gotta add stuff or take away stuff. This one is using standard Holly components, so they should work just fine. So this is actually the base plate I'm going to be using. Plus it just looks a little bit nicer than some 15 year old aluminum. Although this is still nice aluminum, it's actually been polished because that's how the carburetors come. This is just a standard flat CNC bare steel aluminum and I kind of like this more. Moving on to the next order of business, I did talk about this briefly but I am going to be using the Demon fuel bowls. And the reason I'm gonna be using the Demon Bowls over the standard Holly Bowls, I know a lot of people really don't like these bowls, but as you guys can see, this is a standard Sanger Hung Float Bowl, Fuel Bowl, just like this one is. But if we go ahead and measure the depth, I'm using my caliper again, and we go ahead and measure the depth off the ceiling surface of this Fuel Bowl right here to the deepest part, we're actually getting about 34 and a half millimeters. And if we go into the Demon, we measure into the same spot, we get the same 34 and a half millimeters. So you're saying, okay, so what's the point? What are you trying to prove? Well, let's turn these fuel bowls upside down and we're gonna measure off the same thing. And down here, we're actually getting a little bit more volume and we've got 39 millimeters, 39.3. And if we flip the Demon bowl over and we go ahead and measure, we've got, and I'm gonna have to use two hands for this, we've got, 61 millimeters, AKA almost twice, 20 millimeters more of depth. And where that comes to is because this bowl is a little bit deeper, the Holly bowl stops here at 39 millimeters, whereas the Demon bowl, I mean, you guys can basically see what's going on. You have a lot more capacity for fuel. And although it sticks out a little bit farther, the entire capacity is actually right here. It's a pretty big difference if you ask me. And it takes up a little bit more room, but you have that much more fuel inside your carburetor at all times. And although that does affect the specific gravity of the fuel, it won't really mess you up in tuning since I'm gonna be tuning up everything individually anyway. So everything's gonna be tuned precisely to what I'm gonna be running. So I'm not gonna be running the standard HP fuel bowls. One thing that I do wanna mention though is that they do sell the center hung float bowls, but the HP style, and the HP style fuel bowls or the XP, I don't know which ones, are actually longer and deeper than the standard Holly ones and they actually match very similar to the Demon one. But like everything that costs a little bit more money and money is not something I wanna spend right now and I already have all these parts, might as well take advantage of them. This is a lot of information to take in, but we're moving on to the most important part of this entire build and that is the metering system, AKA the metering blocks of the carburetor. So what I'm not gonna be using are these aftermarket metering blocks, and the reason for that is because that's not something you can really replicate at home. You can't really go out and just buy metering blocks. You have to order them online or find a distributor or something and order them, although I do like these metering blocks. I'm not gonna be using them. This was the standard alcohol demon 
meter and blocking as you guys can see it has gigantic orifices but i don't think i'm going to be needing them that big i think the largest jet i'm going to need is probably like a 90 maybe a 100 jet so these jets are like 140 160 if i find myself needing this much fuel then i'll go ahead and you know step up to these metering blocks but if i don't need it i'm going to stick to as much oem stuff as i can this is a standard gasoline one so as you guys can see it's significantly smaller this has a 65 jet in it right now but i'm not going to be using this so i've actually got a bunch of these oem metering blocks and in fact i also have an oem demon metering block and i'm going to go over that in a second and so i've got all of these different metering blocks from different carburetors and before you guys start typing in the comments oh you can't mix and match holly parts every holly part is designed for its own carburetor you can't put different metering blocks it's not going to run right blah 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 if you guys have been following my build you guys will know that i mix and match holly parts all the time and i have no issues the main point is that you actually have to tune these either drill or plug whatever you need or don't need on a carburetor in order to get it to run the way you need it to all right so the question is why do i have so many medium blocks here on the table and there's a really big reason for that and i actually have them divided into two different types of metering blocks believe it or not there are different types of metering blocks the ones on the left are primary metering blocks the ones on the right are secondary metering blocks the primary metering blocks are pretty much almost all the same there's a couple differences and the most important difference to know is that some of these metering blocks have a screw in um ported vacuum passage and then some of them are just like a press fit and then there's two different sizes there's a larger size right here and then there's a smaller modern size as you have right here and then pretty much the last difference is whether or not it came factory with a little whistle tube and this one did there's one oddball one here and this is the one for barry grant so the barry grant metering blocks came factory with a uh, they came factory billet aluminum and aside from that they're no different from these ones right here except for the fact that these come with three emulsion holes and these only come with two but that's not necessarily too important unless you start going into like a lot of fuel flow then you might need three of them but in reality when i'm running the aftermarket metering blocks uh that have the five holes i actually have the middle the top and the bottom blocked off and the second and the fourth one drilled out uh, just like a standard holly one anyway so it's not like we're going into anything kind of crazy with going with the third hole and in fact with three holes i noticed that they actually made them smaller than the standard holly one so these are like 23 thousandths maybe in 20 thousandths per hole and these ones over here are like 28 thousandths or 25 thousandths ish depending on the model but we're going to be excluding the Barry Grant one here because we don't actually need it. So the rest that we have here, like I mentioned before, these are the primary ones. But the real magic is actually in the secondary metering blocks. So I'm about to jump into too much info too fast. So I'm going to actually save all of this for the last video for you guys to watch. And you guys can go ahead and digest it easier. So keep an eye out for the last part of the series. I hope this one gives you a little bit more insight onto the carburetor that I'm building. And it gives you some ideas for the carburetor you guys are going to be building as well. So that's about it. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.